whatever did this had enormous claws, like those of a bear or one of the big cats. Where did the digits be shaped? It's too wide for one of those creatures. Configuration closer to that of an eagle. Of course, much, much larger. Hey, we're looking for Big Bird. Don't be ridiculous. Perhaps a pterodactyl. So I think when they're examining the body in the scene, they're starting to get an idea that whatever caused these injuries to um, the students was not your run-of-the-mill freak animal. The claw marks are huge. The, the fang marks are significantly larger than what you would expect from a normal animal. That might have been part of whatever genetic engineering exercise went into this, is not just mixing these animals together, but creating mutants of the mixture. I believe we may be dealing with a transgenic species. Which is what? It's an um, animal creation, um, an organism made up of the genes of multiple species, the best of the best, as it were. Transgenics usually refers to the fact that you'll take one animal and you'll give it one gene from one other species. So, for example, you could take a mouse and you could give it a human gene. Walter, have you got any idea what kind of animal would be in a lab that could do this? Well, judging by the wounds, I'd say two or three different ones, actually. Right. A motley crew of lab animals got together and decided to exact their revenge on mankind. So how do you make a transgenic animal? Well, there's two main ways to do it. You're basically going to have to get the foreign gene, the piece of DNA, into either a fertilized egg or a very early stage embryo. And then once that DNA inserts itself into the genome of that cell, the animal that is produced from it all the cells in that animal will now contain the foreign gene or the trans gene. I found this book among my old files. What is this, Walter? Olivia, is this the creature? No. But I fear it is quite similar. Where did you get this? I tried to make it 20 years ago. Some of the first genetically engineered or transgenic animals that really caught the public's attention carried these sort of glow-in-the-dark genes, like green fluorescent protein. And green fluorescent protein actually comes from a jellyfish. There's been fish, um, monkeys, cats, and most recently, pigs. Um, in most cases, um, in, in the past, with, with some of the animals that I've already mentioned, like uh, the monkeys and the cat, only parts of their bodies um, have been able to been observed as glowing when they're exposed to a black light. But more recently, scientists have created whole glowing pigs, their internal organs as well as their external skin. Jeez, whatever got to him had some pretty nasty claws. Oh, 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 and some very large fangs. What is that? Just from the fangs of most likely some type of viper. So this thing had the claws of a lion and the fangs of a snake? And that would make the snake uh, eight feet so long. So it's also possible now to do transgenics with larger animals. And rather than just putting the GFP gene in, we can start to put more useful genes in. Um, for example, there's now a good monkey model for Huntington's disease. And so scientists can actually start to study this disease and the effects it has on behavior and try out different therapies. So that's going to be a really useful transgenic animal. And there's so many applications of transgenics. I mean, we're talking about animals, but, you know, everything from bacteria to, to crops to animals have, have been genetically engineered. Pigs are especially good for xenotransplantation purposes because um, their organs are approximately the same size as that of a human, so it's very advantageous to, to study transgenics in these animals. In the case of um, goats that can now um, produce um, spider protein in their milk, that's for a completely different purpose. That's um, in the field of material science, and it can be used for all kinds of purposes, from fishing line to bulletproof vests that are incredibly light. Accelerated Darwinism. Is that even possible? In theory, yes, although one would have to solve many problems. Uh, incompatible species, uh, massive uh, mutual rejection, similar to when a transplant recipient uh, rejects a donor organ. And there's a reason for that. Mixing a bunch of species to create a Frankenrhino is unnatural and a really bad idea. I think it, transgenics could go in a million different directions. And I think it's really going to be based on the imagination of the scientists. There are, I think, with respect to crops, um, a lot of tangible problems that could be solved with this next generation science um, by introducing vaccines into a community 
grew produce for making certain crops um, so drought or disease resistant that it solves many of the hunger problems that they're experiencing around the world. So I think it's kind of interesting the way this episode actually did bring to the forefront the whole idea of making transgenic animals and chimeric species. And I think Walter clearly understands that what you're trying to do is take a unique trait from one animal and insert it into another one. So it's not really just a case of kind of mixing it all together to make a stew. But what you're doing is you're going out there looking for the traits you want. And if they're not in, the, in your animal or your species that you're interested in, you have the whole of the planet to go fishing in.